<laughs> when police use a breathalyzer to check for DUI, it's supposed to give you the right answer. But if you don't use it correctly, it does not. As a result, hundreds of drunk driving convictions in San Francisco could be tossed out. National correspondent Ben Tracy says the problem's been going on for years. All the way to front. At roadside checkpoints like this one, police are looking for drunk drivers. Can you follow that with your eyes only? But if someone appears head. to be driving okay. under the influence, out comes this device. Blow long and hard, please. Commonly known as a breathalyzer. What we learned is that the uh, police department was not testing these devices uh, for accuracy. Police in San Francisco are now being accused of gathering as many as 1,000 potentially faulty blood alcohol readings over the span of 10 years because they did not properly maintain and calibrate their 20 breath analyzer machines. They're supposed to test these devices every 10 days, and that wasn't happening. Attorney Peter Fitzpatrick discovered the problem when his client took two breath tests an hour apart with very different results. She's five points off between their machines, which is a huge discrepancy that should never be, like no criminalist will ever say that that's reasonable. When we drink, alcohol is absorbed in the blood and carried through the brain to the liver and heart before diffusing in the lungs. There it is exhaled in our breath and detected by the breathalyzer machine. But the results are only as accurate as the technology. And when the equipment fails, when the computer generated technology simply isn't maintained properly, then suddenly the whole system is thrown into chaos and we can't rely on anything in terms of the results. Drunk driving convictions are serious. You can lose your license, your job, and spend time in jail. Now hundreds of people may get a DUI do-over. While the police department conducts its own investigation, the San Francisco Public Defender's Office and District Attorney are reviewing cases to determine if any drivers were wrongfully convicted by the faulty data. The information that we have at this point seems to point to negligence as opposed to an intentional criminal conduct by any one of the police department. In the meantime, all 20 of the department's breath test machines have been pulled off the street. For CBS This Morning, Ben Tracy, Los Angeles. CBS News legal analyst Jack Ford is here to bring us up to date on the story. And I'm thinking if you were in San Francisco when you were stopped by the San Francisco cops, DUI do over, does this mean everybody's off the hook? Doesn't mean everybody, Gail. You know, you have to remember these, the, the machines that are problematic here are the, the pre-screening, they call them, the mm -hmm. ones that the police officers use out on the street. You know, so it's part of their first look at whether or not you should be held responsible. Uh, most of the cases, the DUI cases out there, they go back to headquarters and then there's another test. Mm -hmm. It's either the, the traditional breathalyzer or even a blood test. So anybody who was found being over the limit based upon those two, you know, they're not going to get away with it. But it's cases where it was based solely on this early testing mm -hmm. out on the street that we're going to see, as, as we heard just a few moments ago, hundreds of these cases apparently are just going to go away. Smart attorney, though, to even challenge it, because I would think most people think, well, that's what the numbers show, so... Well, the only way you can challenge these machines now, because they've been in play for a long time and the courts have looked at them every which way, is to challenge the technology, not the, the hardcore basic technology, do they work, but the detail technology, mm -hmm. which is have they been continually tested here so that we know they're reliable, and here they've been able to say, you know what, they didn't do the testing apparently they were supposed to be doing. So you think cities across the country are going to be looking at their machines? and I say, think, I are think, these accurate? Well, I think every police department is going to say, what's our system to make sure this testing is being done? Because the problem that they might have here, Charlie, is somebody was, was checking the log saying, oh, yeah, we tested it, it was fine, yeah. we tested it, it was fine, tested it, it was fine, and apparently nobody was doing that. So now you're looking at, I mean, if it was just negligence, if everybody thought somebody else was doing the testing mm -hmm. and they were relying on it, that, that, that's one thing. But... If people in the department knew the testing wasn't being done and they were still convicting people based upon that, you could have a lot more to the story. You could have a criminal investigation here, official misconduct, or even on the federal level, um, you might have civil rights violations. So there could be a whole lot so more. So it goes to this beyond DWP. It, it may well. May but Jack, well. who's going to say, yes, we knew that they weren't being properly and we just well, let it go? That's I mean, how could they ever prove that? Well, I think that what they would have to do, I, you know, I'll go back to my prosecutor days. If I'm looking hard and fast at this, I would say, whose job is it? Okay. Who's supposed to be checking it? Put them under oath saying, did you do it? If you didn't, why not? Did other people know you weren't doing it? So it may well be sort of a circumstantial situation. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody's going to take a hard look at it in terms of are there some sort of criminal responsibilities here.
got but it. There's also this interesting question. What about uh, all kinds of machines that are used to test everything, including speeding? Yeah. Well, you know what? There, there, there has been literally decades worth of litigation about these breathalyzer machines. Because when the first time they came out, everybody was saying, look, they're, they're, they are, the case is over with. If you mm. f fail one of these, we don't have to put any more testimony on. And, and there was something that bothered people about the notion of justice by machine. Yeah. So there were, as I said, cases and after case after case over decades testing these. And finally, they came down to, we're going to accept them as part of a case against you as long as we're satisfied, satisfied you followed the rules. So there's always a little bit of a reluctance in the justice system to say we're going to find somebody guilty based in, entirely on Big Brother and, and machine. And what about people who said uh, re, who refused to breathalyze a test? They're still, that, that's still a problem. In, in, in just about all jurisdictions now, the penalties are the same, if not greater, for refusing to take mm. a test. And you could still be found guilty of drunk driving even if you didn't take the test based upon observations by a police officers. So that, that is never the way out for these types of cases. All right, Jack Ford, thank you. All right, Gil.